Welcome, welcome back everyone. I had the pleasure of connecting with one of our community members this past weekend during episode four of our CryptoCast event. And I can say it was definitely refreshing to talk to someone who already had a great grasp and an idea of the crypto market itself. So I took an interest to learn about his backstory and a couple of other interesting stories that he has encountered in the crypto space. I also hope you enjoy his backstory too and the things he has to say during this event. If you would also like to join our CryptoCast event where we talk about all things crypto, tips and tricks of the crypto space, or you just want to connect with others that are in the crypto space because talking about crypto is overall a hobby of yours, go ahead and check my socials down below. There you will see my Twitter page and also my Discord where at least once every two weeks I try to do a crypto cast event and connect with other crypto enthusiasts out there. The only way this space will grow is if we continue to network and educate each other. Tell me about it and he got in uh, right there and then with Ethereum and he's like, hey, like this uh, crypto thing, like Ethereum and at the time, you know, like, I don't know, I just met him like a month before. So I I just, uh, I didn't really like super trust all of that stuff yet, especially just being like him being like a new friend. I didn't trust all of that in general. And then, you know, him being new, I, I just didn't really like take his word for it back then. Obviously wish I would have, but, um, you know, everything happens for a reason. I believe like I got in when... I was meant to get in, you know, I feel like I would have like maybe gotten greedy or something if I got in earlier and didn't learn about it and just got in because of him. You know, I had to do my own research and kind of get in myself and teach myself everything instead of just like kind of investing in something that someone tells you to invest in, you know. Yeah. So, absolutely. yeah, he told me about Ethereum back then, but um, I kind of just was like, yeah, you know, I'm not interested. Pretty much just told him that. And then he kind of left it alone ever since then. And then um, it became like a talk in 2020. Um, I kind of started doing my research uh, at the end of 2020. Um, I didn't invest anything yet by then, which kind of sucks because I know it went up by then. Wouldn't have mattered too much anyway because I'm I'm just going to be holding. There was I wouldn't have sold anyway. But um, yeah, I kind of just did, started doing my research in 2020 and kind of right early 2021 when it started becoming like a big thing is when I did start investing um and and uh that's kind of just when i started gaining like my full interest for it i just started just doing like you know more of a new technology in its beginning stages so obviously it can't be integrated into all these you know historic systems that have so much backed by it it's just a lot of work it's you know it's just going to take time to build everyone's gonna over the years just continue to kind of move into this uh you know like wave of blockchain technology i believe yeah, it's crazy when you find yourself trying to explain it to someone for the first time. You almost come off as uh, as a bit crazy. Definitely, yeah. It's it's so funny, um, especially because when I gained my interest is in 2021, and anytime I've ever talked to anybody about it, it's hilarious that I, like I do. Like I tell my family members about it, right? And I tell my aunts and uncles and my friends. And now, like now, like the past couple of months, when I see them again, they're like, so. How's that crypto working out for you? <laughs> and it's so funny. And I'm like, hey, you know, I, I get you guys are reading the news, you know, but I'm still 100% like for it. it's hilarious. They're just like, you know, you're wasting all your money. You're just a young kid. It's funny. But um, I give them an opportunity to learn, you know, I'm like, hey, I will sit you down. and I'll teach you everything about it. Yeah, yeah, I actually just... orange-pilled my mom about the whole Bitcoin concept, and she ended up buying, mm -hmm. I think, uh, Chainlink. Yeah. So she really likes Chainlink. Nice. I was like, uh, okay, yeah. That's a good yeah. one, too. Yeah, that's so cool. Proud. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I definitely taught my mom about it a little bit. Um, she thought it was a very cool concept at the time, but she didn't invest anything in it, really. So since she hasn't done any more research or invested in anything i think she's kind of forgot about half the things i told her so it's kind of funny for that full week after i taught her she was she knew all about it <laughs> it was like a year ago 
but uh yeah uh i've gotten uh like my cousin really invested in it he does his research and he really uh you know enjoys uh like finding really like good projects and stuff so i'm happy like so i got to someone who who has an interest in it in, in, as well you know yeah I'm that's kind of my story kind of have the uh the background of the tech side because like you said, a lot of these things will be integrated into our everyday society, um, mm -hmm. especially like uh, the depths, they have to call it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And people don't realize it yet. And it's really hard to actually find somebody who knows that, you know, in time, this stuff will come. Yeah, it's it's just, a, dude, it, it's going to take a lot of time just because of the amount of work it takes to build an application in general. Like, I didn't realize the scale uh, for enterprise, right? So, like, I know, like, I've built my own, like, app before. I've built, you know, like, a website and all these things. But they're all just super basic. They're not, like, an enterprise-level project, right? And then when I, like, came to i worked for intel too so like i went to intel and i worked for uh now american airlines and it is insane the amount of just tech that is involved with a company like it is just mind-blowing they have one billion data pieces one trillion data pieces to work with like you know the entire world is feeding through their their company like it's it's unbelievable to see the background of what's going on in this stuff cuz like for me i like at american airlines i'm working uh, working with the ticketing and like receipts team so like it's pretty much the 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 first uh barrier that anyone every anyone who's ever ordered a ticket from american airlines they've gone through our system like our microservice right and so, like, I never even realized, like, how in-depth this stuff is because we probably have, like, man, we have, like, millions of just data pieces to work with, like, um, like the Internet and this new revolution of, of technology. Everyone's always worried about their data. They don't realize that all this crypto stuff is the, the – its aim is to protect our data which is very funny. Like that's, it's funny that they're all bashing this now, Yeah. <laughs> but you know, they don't realize that, but they're bashing this now. And then they'll go be like, Oh my God, my friend just got hacked. What is wrong with these people? <laughs> We're never safe on the internet. Well, you know, you're, you're kind of contradicting yourself because what all this blockchain does is to help protect your data. They don't realize it yet, which is totally fine. Like it's just a, a matter of understanding, you know, but um, it's just funny. <laughs> Yeah. I that's another thing I'd like to teach too is security because mm -hmm. um, never in a lot of people's lives have they really been in charge of their own money in such a way that if their seed phrase yeah. is compromised, you're done. Yeah, your money is oh, yeah. gone. gone. <laughs> I can guarantee you, if yeah. someone gets a whiff, even if the seed phrase is a is a is a lure, like what we call an it a honeypot if it's a lure like you can maybe within 12 minutes on the dark web you're getting somebody who's trying that on the nearest website whether it's trezor ledger they're they're going to yeah. see if you have money in that account oh and yeah i i think boasting about the importance of security is definitely another thing because people you know they like they get attracted to the gains um it's very attractive I understand. Yeah. That. And so when I come around talking about, hey, let's be secure, you're like, fuck this guy. Yeah, like, no, you're not talking you. about Doge right now. I'm That's the annoying you. part. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is tough because I, I actually like love it that. I totally see. And that's a tough part with my cousin. When I taught him about it, he got into all of that stuff. He got into the, the mainstream side of it, which is tough. But like I still try and teach him on like a. A regular basis like the real importance of it but it's funny he's definitely sucked into all of it and right now he hasn't invested in a little bit because he's scared just like the rest of them which is funny and i, I keep trying to tell him i'm like this is the best time to invest it's very low and he's like i'm just gonna keep waiting i was like okay yeah I mean, <laughs> you go from the top down remaining cautious, yeah you will still be able to get what you came there for which is make money because obviously live by the meme die by the meme like it very volatile market so it's it's easy to make oh, money yeah. but then you at some point you have to sit down with yourself and say 
all right, am I at the most secure position possible um, sitting here with my assets? If you can't answer yeah, that, then that's some, you just need to dig deeper into, okay, how do I make myself more secure, more bulletproof to the adversary over the internet? Oh, definitely. Um, yeah, I, I would say 90% of my assets are very secure. I have all, most of them all. Uh, Stuff like that. You, you said you know. have Ledger? Yeah. You know, I love their interface. Like I, I love uh, it too. It's like super simple. I have it on my desktop. I have it on my phone. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, yeah, I have not uh, purchased the Bluetooth one. Like I got this wallet, I think when it first came out. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah, I have the newer one, the X. Yeah, the Bluetooth one, right? Yep. Oh man, how is it? Is it like super it's, easy to connect to your phone? Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it is very. I have to like literally plug my ledger into my phone. It's embarrassing. Dang. <laughs> that's crazy hey but that's kind of cool at the same time <laughs> man over here yeah. yeah so this chart is the short-term holder uh let's see profit ratio so typically if it's above one short-term holders within the past 100 days are selling in profit if it is uh below one then that means the short-term <laughs> holders are selling below profit within mm -hmm. the past 100 days so i kind of like to see this one because it just shows me how much people in the short term are actually panicking and that's usually when i try to you know base my videos around hold steady do not panic conduct research and reassure yourself that what you see yeah. is definitely not what is actually going on behind the scenes but the one thing i wanted to talk about is blackrock partnering up with coinbase now, oh. this is huge, and nobody's talking about this. There, oh, this is huge. There have been a few channels that uh, went over the fact that BlackRock partnered with Coinbase, but another thing that caught my eye was that... So BlackRock has a trading, a portfolio managing algorithm called Aladdin, and that's basically what will be um, coll collabing with Coinbase to offer their institutional investors um, the most accurate portfolio management because it's it's nice. with AI. So yeah. just think about the most steroid induced trading bot you have ever seen. That's oh, I know, me. man. Hey, <laughs> I, uh, I took machine learning classes, oh, uh, AI classes goodness. in school too. And I built my own um, bot um to do predictions as well and it is mind-blowing to see the technology and what it could do it is huge i've seen it in front of my eyes what i've built and it does more than you even like want it to do it is crazy <laughs> yeah i've seen it man and it is so accurate it is so accurate it's crazy yeah and so then, one thing yeah, i liked from exciting. this article is that and this is around when I was getting into the crypto space. So October 2017, this is the CEO of BlackRock. And he yeah. said, Bitcoin just shows you how much demand for money laundering there is in the world. Like there were so many people talking smack about Bitcoin. So talking oh, yeah. about literally just stepping on your hopes and dreams, because I thought I was doing good. I thought I was, you know, uncovering some gold mine. Yeah. And I have the leaders of Wall Street, the leaders of finance in America just telling me that everything I'm doing is what scammers do. And I was like, oh, no, uh -huh. I'm not a scammer. I don't like this. No, yeah. No, but... definitely. And, and uh, people are still <laughs> saying that stuff. Yeah. Let's see what he says here in 2020. Bitcoin has caught the attention and the imagination of many people. Still untested. Pretty small market relative to other markets. And then he goes on saying, yes, the market is volatile, which he told the interviewer he actually loved and i was like yeah of course you do you yeah. said no one no on the channel yeah it's like the same as yours now like how you just said like everyone joined everyone was asking all these questions like when the market was up <laughs> but it's been so dry for the past like four months man no one is talking but like people were talking every day last year when everything was going up yeah yeah that's it's so it crazy yeah it, it's almost like your discord is a market like you have the yeah the no seriously <laughs> yeah no it, it really is because people just don't want to talk about it because it hurts their feelings yeah the one thing i hope is that everyone's freaking okay like 
you see yeah. these millions of dollars hacked, and I know I'm not in them, so somebody's in them. Yeah. And I just hope oh, yeah. it's not a lot of the people that I try to reach out to because obviously Definitely. Gonna yeah. me off. Like, you're just trying to get me to buy scams. Like, I promise you, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. It's huge. That's the also, uh, you know, a big problem. And, you know, people getting everyone to invest in all this stuff, but not telling them how to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, like in the way of, yeah, you're not protecting your funds. It's that's probably 90% of all of this. You got to be able to protect your funds. Whatever you're getting is if it's not safe. There's it's like not like you don't really even have it. <laughs> yeah, because I can tell you what the most demoralizing or the demotivating thing would yeah. be to start a base in crypto and you actually, you know, had some success in yeah. the beginning to medium term and then literally just lose it. Like, yeah, get completely wiped. Crushed. Yeah. Well, as long as you use the principle of only invest what you can lose. Exactly. You probably won't be too crushed, but it's still, you know, kind of demoralizing. Like, damn, yeah. I just made a bonehead mistake. It is, yeah. 